Welcome everybody. Hope you're having a great day. This is Gabriel from PriceActionVolumeTrader.com. Today I want to talk about a topic that I get a lot of comments and questions when I post videos. I've gotten this question several times in the past, so I wanted to just address this and we're going to be talking about the specific settings for the row size for the volume profile tools. Uh, I'm using TradingView, but this can be applied to any other platform as well. But mostly we'll be focusing on the TradingView tools. Uh, I'm going to be using here on the left side. This is my two most used volume profile tools here, even though I have a pro plan and I can use the indicators that they have up here. Um, I really just always end up using this one just for convenience and this are I believe still part of the free plan so you can use this ones under the free plan as well. Um, the fixed range and the anchored volume profile they're both pretty much the same thing with just a few differences the fixed range you can put it from one point and end it at whatever point you want the anchor you just click one point and it'll automatically go all the way to the end and the thing with the anchored is you can have it on the right side of your chart which i've been using a lot lately and with the fixed range i generally will have it like on the left side here Okay, but the main thing we're going to talk about is the settings. Now, depending what markets you trade, you obviously know that w different markets have different price scales. Like here, the S&P 500, we're at 5,200 right now. Bitcoin is at 67,800. Euro is 1.08. So you can see the scales and the increments of the numbers on the right side are going to vary a lot depending on the instruments you use. So let's say I want to put a volume profile going from this low up until the end of the chart. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to click either. I can use a fixed range from here up to here or I can, and let me, I always do this. This is something TradingView has. I always right click and I put visual orders sent to back. That way is not covering my candles when I'm not hovering over it. And then let's just grab an anchored volume profile and do the same thing. I'm going to click here and I'm going to have it here. Okay. Now this ones, they're going to look like this because this is sort of the presets that I have made. Uh, this one, I don't have the, well, I'm not going to put the value area and stuff because mostly we're going to be focusing on the rows. Okay. So the row size is going to determine how uh, sharp and how defined your volume profile is going to be. Like for example, if I click here and I go to inputs when I trade futures like on Sierra chart I like to use tick charts but here you can see there's two options here number of rows and ticks per row ticks per row is going to basically be one tick will be the smallest unit of measurement on the scale so you can see here that I put 2,000 and it looks humongous because it's literally taking 2,000 ticks just to put one row of the profile. So when I trade like the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, I usually would just put one tick per row. And that's basically going to give me a volume profile that is going to be the smallest unit possible of measurement on this. Uh, in this case, this is the S&P. And you can see if I contract it, it's going to look very sharp. As I push it open and open, now I'm going to start getting more and more defined, the individual rows. And you can see up to a point where I can even see the total number of contracts that was traded at each tick so if you look at the price scale of my cursor 
you can see here it's 520100 5201250750750 because the S the ES market has points and every point has four ticks so basically you're going to have each of the rows here is going to represent point 25 okay so that specifically let's say for the S&P 500 if I bring up the Nasdaq and I do the same thing let's say I'm going to make a profile I'm going to take fixed range from I don't know let's take from this high to the end and I'm gonna send to back and this is the same setting we have uh, under volume I always use total I don't really use up or down or delta because TradingView doesn't really have true uh, tick data on it like you cannot use uh, very um, they don't have you know like cumulative volume delta or footprint charts and things like that so I just base it off of total volume that's just a personal choice of how I like to use it so let's say ticks per row is still one and you can see in the Nasdaq is going to look very sharp because the scale is so big that the Nasdaq is the same thing is going to be moving in increments of 0.25 so now that I'm increasing it you can see right here each of these rows and we got 1550 1575 16 1625 so it moves in the same four ticks per point but the scale is a lot larger than the S&P because while the S&P again is at 5200 Nasdaq is at 18,000 so that's why if you leave it at one for example the Nasdaq volume profiles are always going to look a lot sharper simply because there's so much more rows on the price scale if we do the same thing on a market like crypto like on Bitcoin then you're going to see that we're actually going to get an error on the study so let's say I'm going to go from this high to the end and you're going to see that I release it and this is not loading up the study is not loading because setting one tick per row on Bitcoin with this huge scale like we're at 67,000 now is just I guess too much information for the program to process so if I right click it you can see that if you would use ticks on a scale like Bitcoin you're gonna have to start racing the tick rows until eventually is gonna come up I think it'll come up at like around 40 or 50 nothing yet let's do 30 okay so it came up at 30 so see now that I put 30 ticks per row now it is showing the volume profile on Bitcoin the main thing that I'm trying to just um, you know clarify with this video is what I want to see is I want to see the best definition possible on all the profiles no matter the market so what I like to do as a general default is I just pick under the options I'll just pick number of rows and I'm just gonna put a really large number so I'm just gonna put like 2,000 if I put 2,000 it's pretty much gonna give me the most that it can give for each of the markets so in this case you can see that we you know we're still gonna have one per uh, tick one per the smallest unit of measurement but that way if you have this at a number like 2000 1500 or 2000 number of rows then you're going to be getting the best definition possible in whatever market you use here if I go to Bitcoin number of rows see if I leave 30 you can see how thick it looks because now it's measuring $30 um, per row 
or no, sorry, 300 because of the way that the scale is, is going to be measuring 300 points per row. But in this case, let's just put 2,000. And see, now you're going to get a nice defined volume profile. And why do we want it to be well defined? Well, because when we're trading with volume profile, I want to be able to identify the high volume nodes. I want to be able to identify the edges and the low volume node areas right here, etc. Okay. And same thing would work in Forex. If I grab a Euro US dollar chart, and let's say I put a profile from, I don't know, down here to here. You can see that with this, you also get a very nice defined profile using 2000. And obviously, if you start expanding this, then you're start you're going to get, you know, less definition because now you're going to be able to see all the little rows per um, the smallest unit of measurement on all the markets. And the same thing with this is applicable when you're looking at lower time frames. So if I'm doing day trading through uh, trading view, I do the same thing here with my day trading indicators. In this case, I have two because if I'm trading futures, I'm going to split it between extended hours and regular hours. But if I click here, You can see I'm going to put number of rows, 2,000, number of rows, 2,000, okay? And you can see what I was talking about. For the S&P, it's not going to look as defined because the scale is not that, that big. So you can just go to style and select colors that are a little bit easier to see or darker. But now if I go into the NASDAQ, it's going to look a lot sharper simply because what we are talking about, there's a lot more rows on the NASDAQ because the scale is bigger. So you're going to get a lot bigger definition. If I go into Bitcoin, obviously with Bitcoin, um, you know, we wouldn't be using this um, this times because Bitcoin is just a 24 hour market. So we would just use a 24 hour session profile. But you can see how well defined it looks on Bitcoin, for example, because the scale is so big. Same thing here. If I put pound dollar, you can see the same thing. It looks more similar to the S&P 500. Same thing with Euro as well. Okay, and then the more you squish it, the more the fine is going to look, etc. Okay, but that's pretty much when you see me doing my market analysis videos and I have my volume profiles, my go to setting always is going to be um, volume, I use total, and then row layout, I use number of rows, and I always have 2000 on, and that's going to um, make sure that all my volume profiles are going to be at the highest definition possible for whatever market I am trading. Okay, that's it for the video. Hope this has been helpful and answered some of your questions. Make sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.